Good evening, people watching at 65, Lisa Voice. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, and future was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works. Least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life how do you come to that you admit you're a sinner in need of christ the moment you put your faith and trust in christ jesus the moment you accept christ as savior not only are you saved but you are justified by the blood of jesus rapture ready and sealed until the day of redemption which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation once saved, always saved. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend, and the Holy Spirit will change you. I got to give you this article. This is off of RT. Maria Zakharova. A Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman. She has a lot of clout there. And she said the U.S. has put itself and Russia on the brink. I say they already have of a direct clash. So, the dopey administration is lying about maintaining contacts between the two countries, the foreign minister said. I believe her. I believe her. Washington's dangerous and short-sighted policy has put it on the brink of a direct clash with Moscow. Again, I don't think it's on the brink. I think it is there already. Responding to the U.S. State Department spokesman, uh, Ned Price, who blamed Russia last week for making relations between the two countries unstable and unpredictable. Really? Moscow has genuinely strived to make relations with the U.S. stable and predictable, even as Washington stokes tensions, Zakharova added. It is the U.S.'s desire to maintain American hedge money at all costs, as well as its arrogant unwillingness to engage in a serious dialogue on security guarantees that led to the current crisis, the spokeswoman said. <laughs> well... <laughs> Russia is calling on the administration of Sleepy to avoid further escalation, Dr. Rova said, adding that Moscow still wants to defuse tensions and is open to talking to the U.S. at various levels. Hmm. However, the U.S. is openly lying about maintaining contacts with Russia. Last week, Price said the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, still keeps in touch with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Zakharova called the statement a benign lie, adding that the last time the two diplomats spoke was July 29th. <laughs> Again, I wouldn't... Uh, dismiss her <laughs> amid the russian military operation in ukraine washington has proved massive amounts of financial and military aid to kiev and has led the drive for sanctions on moscow which was also joined by u.s allies in the european union and elsewhere the conflict in ukraine broke out after the u.s rejected russia's proposals for security guarantees in Europe, including a limit on NATO expansion to the east. Moscow repeatedly warned that Ukraine's potential membership in the U.S.-led military bloc would cross a red line and that aiming, uh, arming Kiev would only prolong the conflict. In other words, the U.S. has been warned and warned over and over again. Now, the warnings can only go so far, like I've been saying and like I've been reporting for the last several months now. It's going to come to an end. And it sounds like it's going to come to the end very, very quickly. Now, listen to this 
article off of War News. It just came out about, I'd say about an hour ago. And this is from a retired colonel. The battle for the Ukrainians has been lost and the war has already been decided. This is a retired U.S. Army Special Forces and Marine Colonel Richard Black. As he pointed out during a conference in the uh, Schiller Institute, the battle in um, Aryamosk is disastrous for the armed forces of Ukraine without counting the foretold increase in the troops of the armed forces of the Russian Federation by the beginning of 2023. He goes on to say Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian troops are being thrown into a death trap in Bakhmut by the thousands and it seems they have no solution. Russia's winning this uh, in Bakhmut, Ukraine is losing. And this shows that this is becoming a major strategic development of war. Now think about something. They keep sending troops over there. And they know this. This man is not lying. But yet they keep sending troops over there. Why? Again, you're supplying, this, this administration is supplying Ukraine with, arm, with arms and money. But yet you're sending American troops over there basically for what? For what? You're supporting Ukraine, but yet you're sending American troops over there. You know that they've lost this war, basically. It goes on to say, Black noted that the number of dead Ukrainian soldiers is staggering, and the population of the country will not allow the, to replace the losses in manpower. He said the conflict is lost. And I would just say to the Ukrainians, be careful. That's, this is what he's saying. Be careful. Because if you think things have, are bad now, you will see something that is far beyond anything you have imagined so far. That's what he just said. They lost 500 to 700 soldiers a day. Ukraine is losing more men in a day in Bakhmut alone than the United States lost in a month during Vietnam. And Ukraine has a smaller population than the U.S. General Sergei Serovigin, commander of the armed forces of the Russian Federation in a zone of special military operation in Ukraine, appears tougher and more effective than his predecessor. This was pointed out by American analyst Mick Ryan, according to an analyst in Foreign Affairs magazine when he was asked about the evolution of the military confrontation. The decline in support for Kiev from Western countries will pave the way for a successful counterattack by the Russian military, the analysis points out. If the Kremlin succeeds in preventing NATO countries from supporting Kiev, this could be a disastrous for Ukraine. The military and financial support of the United States and Europe was essential for success on the battlefield. But guess what? It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. So at the same time, Kiev this week was unpleasant was unpleasantly surprised that the that the Russian military has not run out of missiles. The fact that Russia is in isolation is an illusion. I've been saying that for months now. Russia is never in isolation. They're plotting. I'm going to link both of these in the description box. Now, as far as this uh, storm that's coming, nobody knows how much snow you're going to get. Nobody knows what. I'm here in Ohio. So 
from what I'm seeing and from what Kevin has read also and what he's hearing, if it if it goes towards how is it the south, we're gonna get hit here in Ohio. It's supposed to start Thursday. Now Thursday is supposed to be 36. Saturday. I don't know what's I don't know. Nobody knows how much snow we're gonna get. Nobody. My friends in New Hampshire, he just said that it's going to be like almost 50 there this weekend. So I don't know. Some kid prayed for a white Christmas. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen with the weather. But I will keep you informed it's when I know something definite. I, all I know is that something is coming. So that's all I know. Nobody knows how many inches of snow we're going to get. Nobody knows anything yet. So there you go. I will keep you informed when I know more. In the meantime, have a nice evening. I will be back, God willing, tomorrow. Thank you.